It seems that most of the world has transitioned from cow's milk to plant and nut milk alternatives in the past few years, and grocery stores and cafes seem to have a plethora of these alternative milks. But what exactly are we consuming? Are we taking the health aspect of these milks for granted? Well, we're about to find out. And when you watch these videos that go in depth on a certain nutrition topic, ask yourself about the credibility of the person you're watching. Just so you guys know, I'm a registered dietitian. I have a bachelor's in dietetics and a master's degree in clinical nutrition. Just so you know that I know what I'm talking about here because there's so much misinformation about nutrition online. And the reason I create videos like this is to make accurate, straightforward nutrition education so much more accessible. So I hope you enjoy the truth bombs and the cold hard facts that I'm about to drop in this video. Enjoy. One of the most important things when trying to choose a healthy option is to completely ignore the front of the label. Act like you don't even see it. It's not there. It's like the fire festival. It didn't happen. If you want the truth, you gotta investigate. You'll always see ingredients listed in descending order by weight. So the first three ingredients are what makes up most of this product. As you can see, cane sugar is in the top three. Potassium citrate is just a food additive used to lower the acidity of certain foods and prevent it from spoiling quickly. I know we see food additives and preservatives as such a bad thing, but some of them are necessary to keep our food from spoiling so quickly. I mean, you don't want your food to go bad before you have a chance to consume it, right? There are other preservatives like hydrogenated oils, which are actually not good for our body, but there are no hydrogenated oils here, so that is awesome. And just so you know, some of these ingredients are actually vitamins and minerals. So calcium carbonate is just calcium. And then we got some vitamin E at the end. And you can confirm this by looking at the vitamins and minerals and seeing they have fortified these milks with some extra vitamins and minerals, which is awesome. Love to see that. But remember when I said cane sugar was high up on the ingredients? Well, as you can see, there's seven grams of added sugar in one cup. So that's that cane sugar. And that's 14% of the daily value. So an alternative would be the unsweetened version, which has zero grams of added sugar and half the calories, and everything else is exactly the same including all the vitamins and minerals. There's just no cane sugar in the unsweetened version. But honestly, my problem with almond milk when it comes to our health, first of all, this one is not fortified with vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is a problem, especially in the US. And there's no protein in this. So even if you're looking for a low calorie, this unsweetened one is great. But if you're looking for something filling, like if you're putting this in a smoothie and you actually want it to fill you up and keep you satiated, I have a milk alternative at the end that's going to be higher protein than a lot of these other ones because as you can see, there's only one gram of protein. This is not a protein food. Now let's check out the oat milk. This has been super popular lately, I feel. As you can see from the ingredients, it's mainly oats and then they've added some vitamins and minerals. Love to see it. Riboflavin, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin B12. Love that. I always make sure my milks are fortified with vitamin D, but seven grams of added sugar, again, that's quite a bit of added sugar. Let's see if we can find a healthier alternative. Well, this one is less calories, but it's the same amount of added sugar, same amount of protein. As you can see, it's very low protein. It does have less calories though, because there's less fat in it. And what about this barista blend? I suspect this is what is used in coffee shops whenever you order an oat milk latte. And this one also contains seven grams of added sugar and 140 calories. Quite a bit of liquid calories to be drinking. Let's see if we can find a healthier alternative. This one is pretty much the same thing. It's oats, but the problem is it's not fortified as much as the other one. As you can see, there's no riboflavin, there's no vitamin B12, there's a little bit of vitamin D and 17 grams of added sugar. That's a lot. That's, that's way too much. That's gonna be a hell no for me. What about this one? Okay, same thing. We have more fortification going on here. I do like to see that fortification. Seven grams of added sugar still. So we have pretty much the same nutrition facts here, same ingredients. Still, we got that seven grams of added sugar though. But you know, in the grand scheme of things, if you're only having like one cup a day or something, it's not that bad. Uh, you kind of have to assess it at the individual level. Like how much added sugar are you eating in the day when you look at your entire diet? For me, I just can't personally justify consuming this, especially because there is a healthier alternative that is my personal favorite, 
which I will show you at the end. Now, what about coconut milk? We have all been loving coconut in this world lately. And as you can see, the second ingredient is coconut cream. So that's why it's four grams of saturated fat per cup. So that's 20% of your daily value of saturated fat. That's very, very high in saturated fat, which is no surprise because coconut is a high fat food. Now, it doesn't mean that it's like this terrible thing for us, but it is not a health food. We often think that coconut and coconut milk is healthy, but I wouldn't personally consider it healthy. We want to limit our saturated fat regardless of where that saturated fat comes from, even though research now has shown that it's maybe not as bad for us as we once thought. However, those with a family history of heart disease or those who are just sensitive to saturated fats, you probably want to limit it even more than the average person. Hold up, I have to mention something that really confuses people here and it confused me for a minute until I remembered that this is standardized and allowed. As you can see, they're claiming this is a good source of vitamin D. But when you look at it, it's only actually 10% of your daily value, which is two micrograms of vitamin D. Absolutely nothing when you consider that we need at least 15 to 20 micrograms of vitamin D per day. But like I said, this is allowed. Food labels are allowed to say that it's a good source of something if it's 10 to 19% of the daily value, and this is the bottom threshold at 10%. I think this just makes label reading a little bit confusing for consumers, but hey, I'm not in charge here. I'm just interpreting the rules for you guys. Okay, so what about hemp milk? Well, first of all, can I get a stool? Because your girl is short. But wait, I love how the front is actually matching my nails right now. Anyways, one cup is six grams of fat. There's only one gram of saturated fat. Okay, because it's made from hemp, so we have more unsaturated fats. So you see how it says polyunsaturated? That's four grams. Awesome, love it. Wait, no, there's 15 grams of added sugar though. Oh, hell no. And we only have four grams of protein. Oh my goodness, okay, it's fortified a little bit, not even really that much, and it's 170 calories. The second ingredient is sugar. Brown rice syrup is another disguise name for sugar. Yeah, miss me with that one. Next. Let's skip to the good part, shall we? Because there is a plant milk that is almost nutritionally identical to cow's milk, except no saturated fat, no cholesterol, and it's a complete protein containing all nine essential amino acids, even though it's non-dairy. And because of this, it is my personal favorite, and I always have this in my fridge, whether it's this brand or another brand, but I do make sure that my soy milk is fortified. As you can see, this one beats them all when it comes to protein. 12 grams per cup in that unsweetened version. And unlike coconut milk, soy milk has no saturated fat or very little. So it's mostly healthy, unsaturated fats. So in my opinion, this is the healthiest plant milk right now. But let me see if I can read your mind real quick. Because anytime I utter a word about soy, I hear GMOs, oh my gosh, they're killing us. GMOs are so bad for us. And soy is bad for us, right? Estrogen and uh, cancer. So if that's what you were thinking, I mean, first of all, give this video a like because clearly I'm psychic. But second of all, when it comes to your health, you do not need to worry about GMOs. Let me, re let me repeat that. When it comes, when it comes to, your, to health, your health, you do, you do not, not need, need to, worry to worry about, about GMOs. GMOs. I used to think the same thing about soy and about GMOs until I educated myself. And lucky for you, I filmed that education and have been sharing it with the world with these two videos where I break down the exact research and the science behind these things. So be sure to check out this video on soy and this video on GMOs so that you can hopefully understand that better. If you enjoyed this grocery tour video, I have another one where I investigate added sugars. So be sure to check that one out as well. See you later, bye!